the show. You all ready? Let's yes. Do it. We're all Disney right. ready. First of all, did you give them the rundown? I gave them the rundown. We're all right, go. cool. All right. So <laughs> say hi to Tube. What hi up, Tube? Tube? Hello, YouTube. What up, Tube? All right. <laughs> oh, and Tube. last, but certainly not least, we Tube, YouTube. It. It's cool. Tube. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Give it our own nickname. Here we go for the show. Y'all ready? Let's, Let's do it. it. All righty. We're going live in three, two, and one. Welcome to another episode of Business Bros. <laughs> <laughs> what up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to Wednesday's Hump Day. Hump Day. Hernan, see us here. We still love our hump days. Yeah, we still love them. And, and, and S-H-I-T. And so S-H-I-T. S-H-I-T is coming up tomorrow. Yep, yep. Hernan, see us here, host of the Business Bo- Business Bros podcast, along with my co-host. The insurance bro, James C.S., who is today not on camera. Uh, and that's okay. You guys ain't got to see my ugly face. <laughs> <laughs> we, we miss you already. <laughs> we miss you already. I love it. I love it. As always, we have an awesome show planned for you guys with a couple of fantastic wonderful guests in fact let me tell you all a little bit about them our purpose in business is to be of service to others but our business's purpose is to make a profit if you don't know or understand your company's financials you may be in for a world of hurt you are in for a world of hurt Mm -hmm. right let's be honest you might not need a full-time dedicated CFO but you definitely need one today's innovative guests provide external CFO services to business owners to help those owners get the most of their financial resources. With Invictus Advisors, please welcome Vidal, the Shark CFO, Espinosa, and his everyone. partner, Jeff, the Eye of the Tiger, Redondo. <laughs> there you go. Is he hired or what? Yeah, he's, he's hired. hired. He's hired. I, I, I couldn't let you go without a nickname, man. I'm <laughs> sorry. You're done. <laughs> Eye of the Tiger. Eye of the tiger. Yeah. Thinking, right? You know, actually, in, in junior school, my nickname was uh, Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Stay Puff. That's perfect. That <laughs> yeah. was Halloween. Yeah. There you go. Oh, there you go. Us, All right, ladies and gents. Before we get talking with this external CFO, I want to remind you guys, 365 pairs of shoes is where we're shooting for. We got a big pickup coming up from Lizzie Lee. And then these guys said... Uh, 25 we pairs. actually we're going to do 25 pairs. Boom. Guys so what? we're going to get that much closer, ladies and gents. But if you got what? new shoes, you shoes, or you want to donate cash, hit James up, 619-884-0045 or james at csfirst.com. Remember, he also does insurance. So if you need health, life, uh, any of the commercial stuff, home, auto, whatever it is you need, or maybe you have a particular business that you want to help increase your bottom line. Maybe you're a mortgage company, maybe you're a tax office. We want to do the heavy lifting for you. We just want to show you that we can partner up with you and help you out. So hit James up 619-884-0045 or james at csfirst.com. And make sure you guys go to dronequote.net forward slash business bros for all your solar needs. Remember, they don't actually install the solar. They're just helping the buying process. So if you want to shop for solar, don't sit in front of a salesperson with two hour presentation presentations just to get one quote go to dronequote.net forward slash business bros they're going to give you a ton of different quotes and they're going to make it easy drone's going to come over at the business bros oh point at the business bros forward slash business bros uh they're going to send a drone over it's going to measure the rooftop it's going to go they're going to send the measurements to the roofing companies to the solar companies you sit back pick a quote that works for you and now you got solar on your rooftop it's that easy dronequote.net forward slash business bros business bros i love solar right i'm telling you it's the best thing ever it's amazing. What's your what's your electric bill like now? Minus refund. Minus dollars. <laughs> nice <laughs> refund. That's fantastic. Yeah. What's your bill like? It's a refund. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, Actually, since that. since we're on the subject here, uh, what was your buying experience like with uh, solar? Did you have a um, salesperson come out and you know? do a whole quote and it took like two hours and you were kind of not willing to go to another person because you didn't want to sit for another two hours? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The no. guy, because part of it, I was in a networking group with mm-hmm. him and he was like, really, he was like, okay, here it is. And we're like, okay, cool. And so he just like, it was, for him, it was really easy because yeah, I yeah. knew him, you know what I mean? But yeah, most of the time, that's the like way that. it's going to be. Yeah. So you had a relationship. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's that's the go. way. That's the way you should be doing businesses. Yeah. You should yeah. be working with people that you know, like, and trust, right? Yep. So, I mean, that's what business is all about. And you just happen mm-hmm. to know somebody like yep. that. We were from like five, six clients, friends of ours, and uh, he actually came to the house a couple of months later because he won a Tesla. Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. I'd like to win a Tesla. Right? Yeah. That'd be cool. He came Winning to show us a Tesla and he said, hey, the T, it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Park that T over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, whole the whole T. The whole T. All right. So, guys, tell me a little bit about uh, about you guys. How, how did you, uh, 
Well, who, well do I want to start with? with Whoever you, or? you go for it. Oh, go. all right. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me how you got into this uh, in this industry. Uh, as Mexican, my dad was an accountant, so you're expected to be an accountant. Well, yeah, you can count beans. Now you're going to count beans, exactly. right? Exactly. So that's why I became an accountant, and uh, that that was it. I I've always uh, for the last 23 years, I've been an accountant. You like it or was it like pushed on you and it kind of grew on you? You know what? At this time, I love it. It's not a job for me. Uh, I enjoy the, not the numbers. I tell my, my friends and family, do you know what? I'm an accountant, not a calculator. Mm -hmm. So what I like is, uh, interpreting the numbers. Mm, it's there's very, a story there. Yes. It's very, very interesting. I had an experience yesterday with a client that uh, we had a meeting and um, all the strategy and the information I gave them was based on the numbers without them knowing. And at the end, I showed them the financials and I said, hey, whatever I told you, it's in the numbers. It lines up. And they started looking at them and they're like, oh yeah, it makes sense, it makes sense, it makes sense. And the, everything started clicking, clicking, clicking. You know, it's funny, it's like a script, huh? Like it, it's it's almost like learning a foreign language. Yeah. Once you understand how a cash flow statement works, how a statement of cash flow works, how it works with your balance sheet, once you understand these things, then when you look at something, you're like, oh, I see what's going on here. You're weak in this area. You've over leveraged here. You're spending too much here. And a lot of times, even though they're involved in the day-to-day they don't understand that. They don't understand. They think that accounting is doing, adding and subtracting to not pay taxes. Mm -hmm. That's what they think it is. They confuse accounting with bookkeeping, mm -hmm. which is not the same. They think that their CPA has their best interest and CPAs, they're, they have a license, but they're not experts in taxes. They're not experts on accounting or interpreting financial statements. So you need that experience. What, what I like to tell people is that, uh, a lot of times when you talk to your tax preparer, when you talk to your to your bookkeeper, they're reactive people. Yep. There are what's happened has already happened. They're recording what has already happened. When you talk to a financial advisor, they're looking at what has happened and taking into consideration what you want and then giving you a path to get there. It's it's very proactive. Yep. I, a, a, an external CFO, it's a, a CFO for your company. It's very expensive. That's why we provide them external CFOs services one uh, of the things i think that makes us different than your tr traditional accounting firm is we're really entrepreneurs mm -hmm. like our heart is in the entrepreneur space so we really like to help business owners um asset you know leverage their current business and we use financials to do that because we really don't i mean it's important for us to do the numbers but it's more we're more passionate about um seeing the businesses grow and seeing them learn new things and being able to help more people and just, you know, just doing more with what they have. And it's funny because you're actually coming in at a very high stress point. Like you'd be surprised. I mean, you're not surprised. You have, you deal with it all the time. There are people who are very passionate about going out and talking to clients, about bringing in more sales, mm -hmm. about, you know, doing whatever supply chain, distribution, product development, all that stuff is fun. The numbers, the bookkeeping, yeah. the tax planning, that's not the fun part. That's actually the part that drives their stress level real high. And if they could outsource it, they would. They just don't often know where to go. And one thing for, on that is they do their own books mm -hmm. without knowing how to do their books. And they think that their bank statement, it's their profit and loss. <laughs> yeah. Their financial, their most important financial statement. And if they have a balance in their bank account, oh, I'm making money. It's good. It's, it's good. good. Balance is good. Yeah, but yeah. it's not it's not true no. at all. Especially, so. I mean, you, you something as simple as cash and accrual, right? Like mm -hmm. when you're operating in the two different worlds, it, they're two different things. You can pull a P&L on an accrual statement and pull a P&L on the same company on a cash basis, and the bottom line, that net, is going to be completely different. Correct. Why is that? But the whole thing is, is that what is cash versus accrual? Mm -hmm. Half the time, business owners don't even know the difference. And I think the one thing that we do well is we explain to them, hey, this is cash and this is accrual. And we give them the opportunity to to really learn from our experience and really teach them how to leverage that in their business. Well, that's the beauty of being, I mean, you're you're essentially being educators, right? You're mm -hmm. you're processing their story, but you're you're interpreting it to them in a way that they can understand. You're speaking English right. to them. You're taking finance and speaking it to them in English. Yeah, yeah because what we do is, 
we actually show them the numbers, not for tax purposes. We show them the numbers for them to make financial decisions. So, so we can tell them how to grow their business. Forget about the taxes. Taxes are something that everybody has to do. There's only two certain things in life, taxes and debt. That's it. That's it. So you're going to have to pay taxes one way or the other, whether you have a tax strategy, a tax solution, or none. You're going to pay taxes. But if you don't know your real numbers, your true numbers, you're never going to grow your business. That's well, it. And, and I have this conversation a lot with people who come on the show, understanding the difference between being self-employed and Ooh. building a business, right? And a lot of times you're, you're going to see really quickly the people who are self-employed barely have anything that resemble books. You said, I mean, you talked about it. It's the bank statement. But, you know, and they have ambitions to grow and to be big and to scale and have employees and, you know, one day walk away and retire with their business income coming in. And it's a fantasy. It's just a desire. It's a desire because there's no action steps to put in place. None whatsoever. There's no blueprint. No offense, Fernand, but you know who's one of the worst culprits of that? Real estate agents. Oh, yeah. That's absolutely <laughs> true. Yeah. And, 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 you know, that's that's where I get a lot of it from. And, you, I mean, we were talking about, you know, the tax issue. I mean, you can look at any agent. I bet you, you pick. It's a coin flip whether any of them are even caught up or behind on their yeah. taxes. And I guarantee most of them are behind because they don't track what they're doing. There is no accountability. I mean, imagine, you know, you know, you can pay your taxes ahead of time. They're called estimated tax payments, right? You can do that. Do well, they you have do that? To. Well, you're supposed to. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, you're supposed to. You don't have to. You just suffer the consequences of penalties yeah. and additional yeah. fees coming down the line with the IRS, right? But that's the thing is, most of them don't even know that they can do that, right? That that's a possibility. Yeah. It's a simple form. You fill it out. You send the check, and you're you're squared away. You do it four times a year, yeah. and and you're you're good. But they don't know. But They're to do even... that, you need to know your numbers. Right. <laughs> and if you don't know your numbers, how are you going to do it? Right. It's funny because we had a, a, a prospect, a client, that we, uh, somebody that we were talking to to become a client. And I said, hey, where's your uh, sales tax returns? And he's like, oh, I send them late every quarter because my bookkeeper advised me on doing so because if I pay them penalty and interest, they will never audit me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wow. Good luck with that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you. Right. You know what? It's the placebo effect, though. They said it, so it's okay, and it'll never uh, happen until it does yeah, happen. Then yeah, you go yeah, finding yeah. a little bit of extra help. Wow, that was weird. <laughs> that was a bad one. That was horrible. That was horrible. That was terrible. <laughs> we interrupt today's regularly scheduled podcast. Oh, wait. I messed up. Dang. Totally messed it up. What time was that? That was uh, 1217. 1217. 1217. You're supposed to mention the time. I know. <laughs> I mess it all up. So <laughs> the time is 1217. Our <laughs> reading the wrong thing. It's a good thing we don't edit this, right? Yeah, it's a good thing. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Okay, it's here we go. It's not called late Facebook Live for a reason, Yeah, it's not right? called Facebook Live for <laughs> Live, 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 live. You know, we've been... Anyway. <laughs> We interrupt today's regularly scheduled podcast for a purely selfish, irreverent, cash-grabbing word from our sponsor. Hernan, what are we selling today? All right, I'm going to try not to mess up as bad as you did today, all Appreciate right? It. I'll Appreciate throw, it. I'll throw it in here. All right, drunko.net, ladies and gentlemen, forward slash business bros, just like on the t-shirt. Make sure you guys go there for all your solar needs. It's super quick, super easy. Shot from a lot of different... Uh, in, uh, see, I messed up now too. Shot from a lot of different uh, solar companies. It's easy. Drunk, drones come out, measure your rooftops, send it out to the solar companies and the uh, roofing contractors. Man, I just totally set the tone. You totally set the tone here. It's a mindset thing. It I'm is. You. It, it totally is. is. It totally is. All right, ladies and gents, let's just make it easy. Drunecode.net forward slash business bros. It's the easy way to buy solar. It's the easy way to shop from a number of different solar companies. Drunecode.net forward slash business bros. Let's move on from this commercial break. And now, back to the number one podcast in San Diego, the Business Bros Pod. They, who, they never mess up. They never, they mess, never mess up hey, those guys. Okay. Those bros. Yeah. <laughs> those, those bros are perfect. They never make any mistakes. You know what it was? It's because they were talking about how you need to know your numbers, and you didn't even look at the number timestamp. That's I what happened. Uh, That's what actually. You know what? Happened. Let's just blame the guests and walk away. That's what everybody else does. Right. Blame the accountant and walk away. Yeah. <laughs> right? uh, that's what they do half the time. Right? Oh, that's what happened in Mexico. Oh, really? Tell me there, about that. There's uh, there's somebody that it's a politician. I think she's currently a senator. And it came out that uh, she or he, they gotten for they forgotten like 14, 15 million 
pesos oh, oops. in taxes. Yeah, oops. And it be, it, they blame the accountant. It wasn't my fault. But it, they, they, they forgot. Well, well, here's the thing about, about your tax return. It doesn't matter what country it is. At the very bottom, there's this little thing called a signature, mm. right? You sign it, under which means under penalty. And it literally says, right, you have understood and you agree with what's on the return. So it doesn't matter whether you hired a preparer. It doesn't matter if you had a bookkeeper. You sign saying this is correct. Mm-hmm. It's your responsibility. You got to look in the mirror every single time. Guess what the IRS is going to say? Uh, you know what? It was probably that bookkeeper's fault. But here's the bill anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, make sure, you make sure you're responsible and you understand. And your bookkeeper shouldn't be preparing your tax returns. No. <laughs> it's a whole different ballgame. I mean, uh, an extra set of eyes, right? I've seen some books prepared by bookkeepers that you are like, oh, wow. <laughs> Well, just just in like things like charts of accounts and, you know, where you're putting things, expensing things, depreciating things, whatever it's supposed to be. Or K1s with perfect round numbers. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. everything balances. You didn't know that? Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's a decimal? Yeah. Your, your, your W3 does not match to your salaries and your tax return. <laughs> and like, oh, wow. So your W2, W3 is $40,000 and you are... Just deducting thirty thousand dollars. Well, that's why you should have a C corporation, so you can pay the twenty one percent tax now. And if you pay taxes, you'll never get audited. So. <laughs> but if you file them late, you pay interest and penalties, and, and you're never gonna, never going to audit. They never. Not true, ladies and gentlemen. Not, not, true. not true. And it's not that we don't. We also create those. So in case someone needs an, a C corporation, just let us know. Uh, absolutely. So with that. tell me a little bit about your uh, your company name. What it, what what you guys are focusing your attention on? Who an ideal client would be for you guys? We actually are Invictus Advisors, and we are facing towards external CFO. We do books, we do the accounting, we do tax planning, and we prepare your tax return at the end of the year. And uh, we try to help you save taxes and reduce costs, help you grow. Our ideal client is anyone whose revenue is over a million dollars and we help you move from the million dollars all the way up to wherever you want. The sky's the limit. One million dollars is not a lot of money. No, when you- It's not a lot of money. Especially when you're talking about gross sales. Gross sales, yes, your revenue. It's, it's not a lot of money. But moving from the million dollar mark forward, it's the most complicated thing that exists in life. What do you, why do you think that is? What's your opinion on that? Like, like people go through a lot of different stages, right? I mean, you, there's a saying that the first million is the hardest to make, right? After that, you can get to a million pretty quickly. Um, but scaling after that, like, there's, is, is it because, you know, these people have, they don't have systems in place? Is it because, you know, they, they cap out on a certain lifestyle? Is it because they run out of time in the day? What is normally the... I think it's all of it, but to, to make $1 million is not complicated. But to move from there... You need to have a complete shift. You need to have systems in place, procedures, and and change your mind. One million dollars is not a lot. You know, in especially in gross. I mean, when you're looking at you look at a lot of different companies. When I talk to people who are building real estate teams, for example, because mm-hmm. their idea is to scale, so they want to build a, a big team. Um, one of the things I always ask them about is, well, what's your what's your what's your profit margin? Like, what are you operating at? And all of them don't know. And then the ones that do know, they're like 10% or less if you actually look like, at their numbers. Just go and all of a sudden, yeah, all of a sudden it's like, well, if you're like less than 10% net, why are you doing that? You know, you could be at like 60, 70% net if you just were producer by yourself. But I think part of it has to do with the image of I run a huge team, right? And, and I, you know, when you start operating like that, you can have companies that easily make a million dollars in revenue. But it's not about that revenue. It's about your net profit. And if you're not, a, you're, if you're not, and I think that's where the, the biggest growth factor is. You might make a million dollars, but you net a hundred grand before, you know, before your your own salary. And you're there from from six a.m. to the morning to you midnight, it. and it's just for a hundred thousand dollars. You're gonna burn like, out. Just just go work for someone. Yeah, yeah. The the problem is that they don't they don't even have a plan. They don't have set goals. They have very weird. Uh, uh, vision of their business their team is not in tune they're 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 just completely uh, uh unconnected but it starts with the leadership it starts with the owner yeah owners are self are, are self-employed they don't have the uh, the 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 
They don't understand what's the difference between being a business owner and a business operator. They think that if I own my own business, I have to be there every single day from sun to sun. Mm-hmm. Sun up, sun down. That's not true. And I got to do everything. I got to do everything because everything. nobody can do anything better than I can. Right. That's tr- that tr- not true. You, you don't have to be there. You don't have to be a business operator. You're the most expensive employee of your own business. Right. Being a business operator. That's the most, that's one of the things that we just, we just had a conversation with one of our clients yesterday about that. And it's about how they have to change their perception of being a, you know, of working in their business versus working on their business. And they were like, oh, I don't have time to do this. And I'm like, don't have time to do this. That's well, your limitation. Yeah. You're, that's all in your head. You know, and it's funny that we talk about like what stuff you put in your head because letting things go, giving, you know, understanding that you're right. You don't have to do everything yourself, but it's in your head that you don't trust anybody else to do it. Well, just like we were talking about the whole seasickness thing earlier, mm-hmm. we were talking about seasickness and about how a lot of a lot of times it's in it's in your it's head. In, it's, in, it's in your head. Just like the whole thing with the mess up. Yep. Yep. Right. You placed it in your head and that's it. You right. brought it to fruition because you put it in your in your train that's, of thought. That's what happened to James. You yeah. messed up and see, you put oh, it in your oh, thought oh. and messed up and see yeah. had all And it scaled. Out. Yeah. It's like a domino effect right. that just kept going. So yeah, I think I think, you know, people do struggle with that. Um and, and I think it's also, like you said, in your head, a fear of of the numbers. Maybe it's Maybe it's, you know, I don't understand how to do books. Maybe it's, I don't want to do books or maybe worse. It's, I'm afraid to see what happens if I actually look at my numbers. I'm not as successful as I think I am. I'm not as profitable as I think I am. And if I keep my head in the dirt, it's okay. But it's okay to not be as successful as you think you are. Walmart knows how much profit they make per square foot on each store. Mm -hmm. they have every single number to to the dot to the cent like level one two three four how much each level makes me how much square foot on each level makes everything yeah well because the the numbers are where the the where all the information lies yeah and and you know i i it's funny because i teach math and and i have a lot of kids and i have this i hear this all the time i'm just not good at math I just don't get it, right? And and it's one of the biggest things in my head. You you've given up is the key. Math is not the easiest subject for everybody. For some people, it clicks, no problem, they get it. Others have to work a little harder, but they will understand it. It's like a professional athlete. A professional athlete might have the greatest skill in the world, but if they don't practice, if they don't if they don't really nurture and 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 hone in their trade, their skill, then they're not going to get to that next level, regardless of how much skill they have. But you know what? A professional athlete doesn't do it on their own. No. They have a coach. Yes. They have a mentor. That's what we are for businesses. We are CFOs. We actually coach them and help them mentoring them on understanding their business. Every every successful person, business owner, has multiple coaches and numerous mentors. You know, Tony Robbins is a good example. You know, Tony Robbins says like, he's like, oh, my mentor is Jim Rohn. My mentor was, you know, all these other people that he actually looked up to. And I think that's, that is a perfect example of like how many people you need to get coach and mentorship from to be able to. You don't need to know everything. No, no. Especially in the age that we're in today. Right. Like the information is so prevalent. Yeah. Like it, it's amazing. And I always think back, you know, when I was a kid, if I wanted to know something, I had to go to the library or, if, you know, luckily my parents had some encyclopedias. I could look some stuff up. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These books. They call kinda... it Wikipedia now. Yeah, <laughs> Wikipedia now. But, but that's how we found information out. Yeah. We actually had to do, you know, good old fashioned research. Today's Dewey, research. Dewey decimal system. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know, you, you scanning the PDF was actually flipping the pages, yeah. right? right? So, you know, but, but today information is so prevalent and i feel like you can actually learn anything you want to learn you just got to choose you in your mind have to decide that this is the step i want to take Mm -hmm. otherwise you can keep operating your business exactly how you are burn out stress out and eventually walk away different different results with not the results that you wanted if you continue doing the same thing expecting different results guess what you're insane it's insanity exactly so tell tell uh tell me a little bit about 
um, how somebody gets a hold of you. Like, what 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 should I expect yeah, if uh, if we get in contact with you guys? Well, um, you can visit our website, invictus-advisors.com, or you can give our office a call at 619-677-6512. We're down in Mission Valley. So um, when you get on the phone, you'll chat with me. And, um, you know, you can give me a little bit of, you know, your business, what your business type is like, you know, how much income you bring in, just like some general questions. And then I'll send you out a little um, questionnaire about, you know, just some more information. And then we, you know, look for your tax returns and some, you know, your bank statements. And then you'll get on the phone with Vidal and then he'll go over kind of what we saw from your tax returns and your We'll create a blueprint, an actual blueprint that you can follow with our help Mm -hmm. to achieve your goals. And is uh, is your service like a, a full-on service or is it something we can go out of the cart? We are a full-on service. It's, it only makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it goes back to the whole point of like we want to see business owners succeed. And so it's easier for us to be able to handle all the pieces than being able to get, you know, your books from your bookkeeper and then your taxes from your accountant and then your, you know, something else from this person. It's easier because we can see the trends on what's going on with your business. Keeping it all in one spot. Yeah. Yeah. That totally makes a lot more sense. I mean, your finances should stay in your finance department. I mean, if you're really building a business, you're building out sections and departments that operate autonomously, but together. Right. I I have a name for that. Like every, every entrepreneur goes into business not knowing the dark side of business. Oh, the dark side. Now you pique my interest. What do you mean the dark side? If you go into business and you've never been a, a business owner, you don't know anything about human resources, mm-hmm. management, accounting, taxes, systems, controls, internal controls. You know nothing about that. Oh, welcome to the learning curve. <laughs> <laughs> the, the most expensive, it's a learning curve. Mm-hmm. We shorten you, your learning curve, period. And, and you know, it's funny though, when you hire a coach, when you hire a mentor, that's, that's what, what you're paying for. That's the, exactly the cost that you're paying up front. You don't understand oh if you've never been in business, you don't understand the cost of the mistakes that you're making. You might not even see the cost of the mistakes cause you, you haven't seen the upside, right? Have you done it right? You could have saved yourself six months, seven months, a year, two years of doing things incorrectly had you had the mentorship of people who've already been down that path. It's funny because we, we always have uh, mentors and coaches uh, for ourselves because we don't know everything. Of course. And we need help so we can help our clients. And we were having dinner and my brother's a doctor in Mexico and he bought a clinic five years ago. And I said, oh, next week we're going to uh, North Carolina to meet with our coach. He's like, why are you flying there? like as we paid a hundred thousand dollars for her so it makes more sense to oh you you would have paid me a hundred thousand pesos and i would have coached you and i said well you have five years with your clinic that you're building if you would have gotten a loan you would have finished it four years ago and you would have been making profit for the next last three years so i don't think you're the best business coach for me (laughs) (laughs) you know it's funny though when you say things like that to people their initial reaction is to be offended right he was like (laughs) but but if you can kind of take that as as you know criticism like constructive criticism like this is what we should have been doing it's not that i don't love you bro like i care about you you know you're you're doing your thing but i want to always talk to people who are 10 steps ahead of me yes who've already been there because they've they've already trampled the same ground that i'm going over they've already know where all the holes are where all the where all the traps are so i don't want to step in those same holes you and I, we might be more along the same level. Like that's great for us talking about stuff. That's not great for me getting better. Read books, listen to podcasts, listen to uh, audio books. Every successful individual in life has left crumbs all their way yeah. in their books. Exactly. Their stories. Their stories. Yeah. We're They're, human. We're human. Yes. We, I mean, that's the best way we learn is through stories. So just read the stories of the people who've already been there. And once you made it. You are not inclined for the money or wealth. You're actually inclined on helping humanity. Yes. Mm-hmm. Just look at most of successful individuals. Most of their planning is for tax purposes on their foundations. Of course. But but they do have their best interest on helping other individuals. Yeah. yeah. So just here, learn from them. What is the Forrest Gump line, Ham, that he, uh, that he says? Mama says that uh, there's, there's only, only so, so much, much money. 
that a man needs everything else yeah. just for show is just for show right and that's that's kind of the the whole thing i love forrest gump it's probably one of my mm-hmm. favorite movies of all time um but uh my but that's th- yeah that's that's where you know that whole thing of success like you only need to be so successful after that you we know just, what do we, we just, do with uh, that? bought the rights to a to a program i don't know if i can say this name i pretty much again i think uh, it's called fuck up nights mm. and uh, we're actually bringing it to san diego we bought the rights for san diego and it's about learning from successful entrepreneurs from their failures well you know and, that, and here's the thing there is no successful person who hasn't failed every single person fails and and you know i talk about this all the time you actually don't fail no you learn you yeah. only fail when you quit mm-hmm. right if you don't know or if you don't have the right m- mindset if you don't if you're not strong enough you're gonna think about that as failure right but you're gonna continue moving forward because of your ego and you're gonna continue committing the same mistakes and the same mistakes and the same mistakes until you change your mind right 100 percent, 100 percent. i i i look forward i i use failure as a as a positive thing all the time i want to fail more often i want to try something see what doesn't work so i can move on and modify and adapt even in the gym right like i'm running in the mornings i want to get to the point where i can't breathe because then if i can push just a little bit past that that's where the growth happens that's actually it's really funny you mentioned that because i was just i actually just said that to my trainer a couple weeks ago i was like you know for me it's not about going to the my personal training anymore for the weights and stuff it's all mindset now yes because it's like pushing past like one of the one of the biggest lessons i've learned from going to the personal trainer was i do everything about 70 percent mm-hmm and, and it's so in your it's, own mind yeah 70%. yeah and i do and i just grind that into my head so i'm like i get to number seven i'm like i can't do anymore i can't do anymore and then i just have to like understand okay that's where i think i can't do anymore but then i have to push past that and get it through speaking of coaches and mentors i was listening to an arnold schwarzenegger speech and he was talking about that he's like when i was at the gym i wouldn't start counting until it burned that's when uh, i started yeah. the count. magic jordan or magic, magic johnson who was it that he trained five hours a day I don't or same type through a thousand yeah. two thousand shots every yeah. day or something like that oh, yeah yeah, yeah it's interesting it was... that you guys are talking about mindset because most of us look on Facebook, look on Instagram, YouTube, and they sell you all these programs that you're going to make millions and millions and millions. And you need to put the effort into them. It still takes you action. You need to work yeah. on them. Yes, it still takes yeah. action. Not by buying the program. You're not going to get the Lamborghini outside your, your, your house in Beverly Hills. Mm-hmm. You, they've worked for it or they rent it to film the video but <laughs> <laughs> somewhere right? yeah 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 so just work on it yeah and and you know it's uh, <laughs> in the whole mindset thing is funny because I've, I've had this discussion with james over and over on a number of different episodes on the show and we always have the the argument of is it what's more important the mindset or the action which one is takes the crown it's like the chicken and the egg type I thing i think it's the action see i would i'm with you i'm on the action part because i, I i'm of the mindset when you take the action the mindset follows He's completely opposite. He he has to realign his mind so that he can take action. And both of us are successful in what we do. I don't think there's really a wrong answer. I think it's an internal thing that you need to process. But I think that if let's, I'm gonna give you an example. And in, in, with cars, the first time you drive a Mercedes, you're not gonna want to go back to a Toyota mm-hmm. or a Volkswagen. It's like it's it's a Mercedes. Mm-hmm. It drives different. So the action of driving a Mercedes, it's going to change your mind on saying, how am I going to be able to afford to buy my own Mercedes so I can trade in the Volkswagen, for instance, or eating a hamburger in Carl's Jr. and going to get a hamburger at Morton's. It's like two different things. Right, right. A steak at Sizzler, a steak at... Uh... Well, Ruth Chris or something, right? Right. Yeah, completely different. Uh, Age steak. Oh, so oh good. my God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but, but again, it's a mindset because the aged steak is a $65, $80 steak. But it's okay. The action of going to getting the $60, $75 steak or Wagyu beef from Japan that it's $2,000, 
and you try it, you're not going to want to go back to the ones on Bond. Right. You're going to be like, hell this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, I'm, I'm with you. But I'm telling you, I've had the we've we've had the argument back and forth, and and it's I don't, I honestly feel like it's it's an internal thing, an individual thing ultimately, which one comes first. But whatever the one it is, yeah, the chicken or the egg. I don't care which one comes first. It's you need to do both. You need to be in action, and you need to have your mind right. Because even those who are taking action don't always have the necessary mindset to take action to the next level. Our coach did says, you hear, "Did you hear this one though? I ordered a chicken and an egg from Amazon. I'll let you know." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, one of our coaches say says fly in the front, drive in the back. Fly in the front, drive in the back. Mm. What do you mean by that? Fly first class mm. gets driven around. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Fly in the front, drive in the back. Once you've flown in the front, you're never gonna go back in the back. You know That's one of the, one of the best books so I've read is, recently about mindset is uh, Can't Hurt Me. By uh, by um, Goggins, uh, Dan Gog- I love that guy. Stay oh, hard. I think that's the same. Uh, yeah. He's he's uh, um, he's like been a, he did like Navy SEAL training yeah, twice. Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I listen oh, to his audios and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, what that's he, he says on all book. his audios is oh, stay man, hard, stay it's hard. Incredible. It's incredible. You know, he talks in the book about you know how you know he ran a hundred miles like mm-hmm. never training before, and um, it's all it's all mindset. And you realize through that book how much the human body can actually go through and like the majority of it is is mindset yeah it's it's you stopping yourself yeah and it comes down to everything whether you're talking physical whether you're talking diet whether we're talking business you're you're the brakes yeah. in your own life yeah. like you're the one stopping you from doing whatever it is that you supposedly wanted to achieve mm-hmm. it's it's you and half people don't even know it's a whole thing of you don't know what you don't know right you know and then you start realizing you're like oh yeah maybe you start opening your mind a little bit and then it just, the crack just starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, but, it's pretty incredible. But once you see it, you can't unsee it. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing. Right. And I, I talk about that often with, uh, you know, when, when you get bit by that entrepreneurial bug, that's it. Like trying to go back to get a job, you're never going to settle in the right way yeah. because you've already tasted what it's like to have that freedom, that flexibility, the ability to earn without a cap. If you grow. If you grow, if you grow, because most entrepreneurs go into entrepreneurship thinking that I'm going to have a lot of free time. Mm-hmm. Guess what? You You're going to have to put the effort for the first two, three, four, five years so you can enjoy after that period your freedom. Yeah, the fruits of your labor. Correct. If you have the right mentality of being a business owner, not operator. Right. That's that. It's very complicated. Not everybody has that gene. In. A lot of us. A lot of us want to be entrepreneurs. A lot. It's a trend. Right now, for sure. Because it's easy. Mm-hmm. It's I don't have to obey any any rules, regulations, because I don't have to get... Well, it gets sold as sexy. Yes. It gets sold as sexy. But it's not. It's it's definitely... It's it's lonely. It's like accounting. Yeah. <laughs> How can accounting, accounting and taxes be sexy? Yeah, Jeez. it's not. But no. it's still got to get done. Yes. And that, that's the thing. You know, you go into entrepreneurship, you go into something on your own, you got to have your own set schedule accountable to only you, right? Accountability. Accountability. There you go. See, it's another accounting word. But if you do it, if you find mentorship, if you find help, if you look for if you look for solutions with people who have gone through similar problems, you can make it. Yeah. Right? So, ladies and gents, I want you guys, oh, I want you to look at this camera real quick one more time tell people how to get a hold of you. Um at invictusdashadvisors.com 619-677-6512. Cool. And we're going to do Ask the Bros. So I want you guys to think of a question, something business or personal. While you think of that, I'm going to let our audience know about 365 pairs of shoes, ladies and gents. We are going to be less than 100. So close. So if you got new shoes, uh, you want to donate cash, you want to donate uh, used shoes, hit us up, 619-884-0045 or james at csfirst.com. The guy does insurance. We own an insurance agency. We want to help you grow your business. Maybe you have a tax office. Maybe you have a mortgage office. We can help increase that bottom line by adding an insurance department into a, the uh, book of business that you already have. Why not take advantage of the customers that you already have? We do the heavy lifting for you. 619-884-0045 or james at csfirst.com. Drunkquote.net forward slash business bros is our show sponsor. Make sure you guys go there. Shop solar the quick, the easy way. Drunkquote.net forward slash business bros. You guys ready? I'm ready. All right. Ask away. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll bring up the question we talked about earlier about the 
Why do you think there are no uh, Spanish business podcasts? That's a good one. <laughs> um, I, I don't know the real reason why. I just think uh, if, if I had to give an opinion like off the cuff, I think it's a cultural thing. Right. I think uh, I think the Hispanic culture lags behind the American culture. And so there's a lot of things that, and for example, um, I know in, in growing up as Mexican, we work really hard. We just don't always know what to do with the money that we have. We don't know the steps to take it to the next level. That is growing with the education, with with uh, you know us becoming more mainstream in, in American culture. Everything's coming. So I think right now this whole podcast thing is a wave of the American culture. And I think that, that the other cultures are kind of not as caught up yet. So I think there's a huge niche there if you start a podcast in Spanish in any in any specific. I mean, first of all, in Spanish, general, period. Mm -hmm. But if you go even more niche into like finance in Spanish, I mean, there are so many people that want to know the information that we talk about on the show that are that just speak a different language. But there's but you 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 said the right word. It's the 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 mentality on on Hispanics is that. I don't want to know my numbers and I just don't want to pay taxes. Yes. Period. Yes. That's it. Yeah. It's a hide yeah. mentality. Yeah. 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 I have some money in my pocket. I have money in my bank account. I'm good. That's okay. Yeah, I'm good. That's it. I'm comfortable. I don't want to. Here we go. Hermanos de negocios. Hermanos de negocios. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. a syndication. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> It's the offshoot. Here we go. Right. We're gonna do. We're gonna do it in Spanish. No, but I, I honestly think that yeah. there's a there's a huge niche there. I mean, there are so many people who want to listen to things that are are ready to break away from that traditional mindset of you know I want better. Like my yeah. family, I, I always grew up knowing that you know my parents. We weren't. We were very humble growing up. We didn't have very much, but we everything we did have, we were open. We our door was always open. We helped a lot of people. Family always came over. Our house was super packed. James slept on the couch most of his life because we always had people in our house, right? And so, uh, but in that, we knew that we had to do better than our parents did. Our parents are first generation in this country. We knew that we had to do at least what they did, if not more. And then we expect that of our kids, right? Our kids have to do at least as well as we are, and then if not more. And I think that is something that's coming in these new generations. These yeah. kids, you know, they're they're now second, maybe third generation uh, of Hispanics here in this country, and they got to do better. But who do they look up to? Where do they get mm -hmm. the information from? They don't know because if they ask mom and dad, they only know what they lived. They, they can advise them on certain things, so they're going to reach out and look for different places, but they only speak that language. If you provide that that content for them, I think it could be a very – I think you guys do way, way better than us for sure just in having that, that concept. Well, there we go. There it is. Boom. I have nothing. Yeah. Oh, has that? No, 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 no. You're looking at me and you're like, no, no, no. I thought you were going to come with something. No, no, no. It's perfect. I mean, um, I guess – I, I have I have a theory that there it, there are Spanish podcasts out there like th there have to be there are um, there are yeah and but I don't know I mean I just don't think it's as mainstream as we have English speaking podcasts interesting uh, data Mexico it's the number one in the world in uh, uh, blogs in blogs in blogs interesting. Yeah. But communication comes in so many different forms. So there are people who are going to communicate really well in the written word. And there are others who do well speaking. And there are others who do well with art and video. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's so many medium out there. That's the beauty of having a podcast is you have the audio, right? But you also can do video and now you have the visual also. Right. You can trans transcribe your shows and now you have the written so you can use all kinds of different mediums. You can cut little pieces and use them in your social media. So it's just who are you targeting and what mm -hmm. message do you want to come across? But you can do it. I, I, I think it'd be awesome if you guys did that. You have the space. I heard you guys talking. We right? Do. You have the space. You can make it happen. Just dedicate some time to, to do it. And, and and we're here to help you. Like If you have any questions along the way, we're, we're here. We'll subscribe. Yeah, Bicultural, for sure. Bilingual. 
Absolutely. We've already committed our first subscribers. Yes. Absolutely. There you go. We haven't even launched yet. You got it. You That's got right. it. Like, what is it, Tony? You sell your book before you write it? That's yeah. right. Something like that? That's yeah. right. <laughs> Coming soon. <laughs> Sold. All right, guys. I want to say thank you guys very much thank for you. coming on the show. Thank it you was, so much. It was awesome. Yeah, it was. I always love talking about this sort of stuff. I don't always get to go in depth into some of these things, um, especially when it comes to accounting. That's kind of the boring subject, remember? It is. It's not but sexy. It's not sexy, but uh, uh, it's, it's something we got to know, something we got to talk about. So yeah. thanks again guys ladies and gentlemen thank you for coming out on the live show that's all we got for you guys today peace spread positivity and we're out bye-bye bye 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 facebook bye. there we go sweet easy and to the point that was awesome